this video, I'm going to show you how to get a Teensy microcontroller ready to be programmed using the Arduino IDE. The Teensy microcontrollers are actually very nice microcontrollers. They're reasonably priced, uh, they're pretty powerful for what you get, um, and overall they have a pretty good value. So using this microcontroller, I can do things as simple as flashing an LED, which I'll show you how to do today. Um, we can connect this to a, uh, any other computer, like a Teensy or a PC or a laptop using USB. We could read sensors, we could control motors. We basically can use this device to interface with the real world. So um, what we're going to do is get this set up to be programmed using the Arduino IDE, which is an open source IDE that is used for programming a lot of different microcontrollers. And it sort of simplifies um, a lot of the hardware specific and architecture specific um, aspects of microcontroller programming. So uh, Arduino has been around for a few years, it's very popular now, and there's a lot of different microcontrollers that support the IDE, or rather that are supported by the, uh, by the libraries of the IDE. Teensy is one of those, and um, that's what we're going to use. So um, you can go to the Teensy manufacturer website, that's pjrc.com, and then slash Teensy, and um, we can go ahead and get started. The first thing that we need to do is download the Arduino IDE from the Arduino website. The Arduino website can be found at arduino.cc, and we're going to need to go to the download section. And we're actually going to be installing version 1.6.11. The newest version is 1.6.12, but it's not officially supported by the uh, Teensy files that we're going to have to add to our Arduino IDE in order for the Teensy microcontroller to work. So we're going to stick with 1.6.11. There is a beta version of the 1.6.12 Teensy files that you can try if you'd like, but we're going to go ahead and stick with a, a stable release version. So in order to support that, we're going to click over here on previous versions of the current release, and we should be able to find the 1.6.11 um, Arduino installer. So we want the uh, Linux ARM version because we're on an ARM processor. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and start the download. And you can down you can uh, donate money to them if you want, but of course we're just going to skip that for now. We'll click just download, and then we'll wait for our download to complete. Once the download is complete, we can extract our IDE files to begin the installation process. The archive is in a uh, .xz format, which is a type of compressed file format similar to zip. In order to decompress it or to uh, extract those files, we're going to need to use the uh, tar program. Uh, tar is a program that supports a bunch of different file compression formats. It's very popular for Linux, and we can use that to extract the .xz file. So in order to do that, we're going to invoke the tar command and we're going to pass the XF flag. That tells it to uh, extract using the um, X compression scheme. And then it's going to be in our downloads uh, folder. And then the archive is named Arduino 1.6.11 linuxarm.tar.xz. So basically the XF flag there is telling it to do the extraction on an XZ file. So once we put that in there, um, this line, if I were to invoke it just like this, it would extract all those files into my downloads folder. But I actually want to go ahead and extract this into my home folder um, because I'm going to run the installation process from there and I want to keep all those files there for the future rather than being in the downloads folder. So I'm going to give the capital C flag, that means to change the output directory, and then I'm going to issue um, the home directory symbol there, the tilde and the slash. So basically this entire line says uh, take this uh, tar.xc file extract it using the uh, XF flag from the um, tar program, and then I want that to go in my home folder. So I'll go ahead and hit enter to invoke that command, and it'll run the extraction process. Um, the archive will take uh, probably 20 to 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute to extract, because it's a little bit large, um, so we'll wait for that to complete. Once the file has been extracted, we're ready to begin the installation process. So what we need to do, um, number one, we have to install the actual Arduino IDE itself, but we also have to include um, some files specific to the uh, Teensy microcontroller so that we can compile our programs and run them on the Teensy board. So in order to do that, we need to go to Teensy's website, and we need to get um, what they call Teensy, Teensy Duino, which is just a series of support files that support their boards. And then we also need to add something um, called a UDEV rule to our system. UDEV is a, a system that the Linux operating system uses that basically provides permissions to pieces of hardware and uh, processes that run in your system. So eventually what we want to do is run our Teensy board as a USB serial port, and in Linux we have to provide permissions to do that. In other operating systems like Windows and Mac, it just automatically trusts a USB device when you plug it in and no permissions are needed. 
um, in Linux, you could uh, go ahead and run your program that uses the serial port with sudo, but instead of typing sudo every time, we just want to go ahead and include the udev rule. So first, to install the Arduino IDE, we need to go to the directory where we uh, extracted the files, and that's going to be in the home directory in the Arduino folder. So if I cd into that directory and then I issue an ls, I can see here that there's an install script that they provided. I need to run the script as sudo, so I'll issue sudo and then uh, install.sh, and then I'll begin that, and then this will go and actually install the Arduino IDE into my operating system. So basically it's taking all of the extracted files and it's registering them with the operating system so that I get a uh, desktop shortcut and a start menu shortcut and all that. Once the installation process is complete, we can click on the start menu, go to programming, and we can see we have an entry for Arduino IDE. For, so from this point forward, we can launch the Arduino IDE program by clicking on this button. If you go to the Teensy manufacturer website, you'll see a link here called Teensy Duino. Um, that actually has all of the installations instru installation instructions that I'm referring to when I talk about the UDEV rules and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can go through this and uh, you can download the files and you can scroll around here and find out how to actually um, install the UDEV rules and do all that. But to make things easier, I've included a script on our GitHub repository that will do all this for you. So feel free to go and um, click on the download and install link if you want to manually um, download and install the Teensy, Teensy Duino files into the Arduino IDE. Um, but I'm just going to use the, uh, the in installation script right now just because it's easier. So to access our installation script, we'll we'll, we will first have to clone our GitHub repository uh, like we've done before. So we'll go ahead and issue the clone command. Once the repository has been cloned, we can go ahead and find the installation script. So we'll issue ls, um, we're going to go ahead and cd into our directory, and it should be in the Teensy folder here. So we'll cd into the Teensy folder, and there's a uh, sh file, uh, install teensyduino.sh. So in that script, uh, I've programmed it to automatically go to um, the Teensy manufacturer website download the UDEV rules uh, and all that stuff, the Teensy, du Teensy Duino installer, and uh, to execute all that stuff automatically. So to invoke it, uh, all we need to do is issue sudo sh and then uh, the name of the script, which is install teensyduino.sh. So we'll go ahead and execute this. And you can see here it's performing the download of the Teensy Duino installer. So we'll allow that to complete. And now it brings up the actual uh, installer GUI. So here we have uh, the Teensy Duino installer. So what this is going to do is go to where we extracted our Arduino IDE. And uh, we're gonna, we need to tell it to find that directory. So that's why we moved it to the home directory to be easier to find. So we need to tell it where to find the Arduino files that we extracted. Um, so we'll go ahead and tell it where it's at. It's going to be in the home directory. So it's going to be in home, pi, and it's here in Arduino 1.6.11. When you select the correct directory, it'll automatically scan it and find the uh, executables that are in there, and then it will go ahead and um, release this next button so you can click on it. So when we hit next, this will proceed with the installation. Um, these are all of the extra libraries that it's going to install. You can go and deselect some of them if you'd like, but we'll go ahead and install them all because it's not really that much disk space. And we'll go ahead and click next, and then we'll click install, and then this will install all of the uh, Teensy files into the Arduino IDE. When the installation is complete, you'll be greeted with this message telling you um, the first time you use the Arduino or the Teensy to basically plug it in, click the verify button, and then uh, press the push button. But we'll cover that here in just a little bit when we actually run our first program. Now that the Arduino IDE and the Teensy Duino files have been installed, we can go ahead and uh, run some actual code and flash it onto our Teensy board. So we'll go ahead and run the Arduino IDE and we'll let that start up. And once the IDE has launched, we're ready to start programming. 
the very first time you launch the IDE, you may be granted with a warning saying something about how the Arduino projects folder doesn't exist. That's just telling you that it's going to make the projects folder um, where your future projects will be saved. So you can ignore it for the very first time you launch the program. So in our GitHub repository, we have a LED flashing example. And we're going to go ahead and um, compile and run that on our system. So we've actually got the code loaded here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and load it um, fresh and start you know, from a new project. So if I go click on open and then I go to uh, the Teensy folder within our GitHub repository here, the CSE 2100 folder, um, you can see we have this Teensy Blink example. And then there's a .ino file. .ino is like a project file or solution file in uh, Visual Studio uh, or Windows or Mac or whatever. So uh, teensyblink.ino is just the software source um, or the source code for our uh, blinking example. And uh, the .ino extension just says that it's an Arduino project. So Arduino will automatically recognize INOs and then we can double click on it and now we have our code loaded here. So our code is very simple. Um, actually the, RD, the Arduino IDE is pretty simple. So basically how it works, um, you have a setup function and a loop function. The setup function automatically gets invoked when you uh, launch any application on the Arduino. So this is where you want to put stuff like initiali initializing pins, um, setting up peripherals, uh, you know, for example, making a pin, uh, an analog pin versus a GPIO, uh, and setting everything up. And then once the setup function has been called, then the loop function will run forever. So this loop function will automatically loop, and every time it finishes uh, one iteration, it's automatically going to loop back. So it's just like a forever loop that's running, and this is where you want to put your main uh, program contents. So in our example, all we're going to do is flash the onboard LED, and we're going to put a little bit of a delay um, between each blink. So what we want to do is set the pin mode of the LED pin, which on the Arduino 3.2 and 3.1 as well, it's pin 13. So I've made some defines here. Um, I've defined LED pin as 13, uh, defined the on state as high, and the off state as low. So these are just global constants that I've defined here. And then in my setup function, I'm setting the pin mode of the LED pin to output. So this is saying that pin number 13, uh, I want the mode to be output. In other words, it's going to be generating uh, binary output signals. Once that's done, then the pin is ready to um, be used to basically toggle the LED. So once this uh, function has run, we'll go to the loop function, and then we're just going to turn on and off the LED. So I'm going to call the digital write function. That's a function within the Arduino IDE that allows me to write a logical value of 0 or 1 to a pin. Now in this case, the Arduino is a 3.3 volt microcontroller. Um, some microcontrollers are 5 volts, some are 3.3. But when I say digital write um, to the LED pin, to pin number 13, <clears throat> and then write LED on, which will be high, that's saying that I want the state of the pin to be high. So this, this pin is going to generate a 3.3 uh, volt output when I execute this function. So when this is executed, um, then the LED will be on, and then I'm going to, to delay for 50 milliseconds, and then I'm going to uh, turn the pin off by addressing the LED pin again, and then uh, setting it to LED off or low. So once this line is invoked, the voltage on the pin will be zero volts and the LED will be off. And then once again, I'm going to delay 50 milliseconds and then I'm going to loop back. So when I loop back, the very first thing that's going to happen is I will turn the pin on, wait another 50 milliseconds, turn the pin off, and then wait another 50 milliseconds. So basically you're gonna see the pin go on and the, pin, the LED go on and then the LED go off and it's just going to repeat forever. So when this is all ready, uh, I'm ready to compile my program. In the Arduino IDE, there's a verify button and there's an upload button. Verify is the same thing as compile. So I can go ahead and click verify and this will compile my code. And down here it says compiling sketch. And then if there are no syntax errors or programming errors, then it'll say that everything is okay. But that won't actually put the program on my board. So to get it on the board, the very first thing that I need to do is go over here to tools and make sure that I have the proper board selected. The Arduino IDE supports many different types of Arduinos um, on many different architectures. That's kind of the, ar the beauty of Arduino is that we can use one sort of programming platform to program many different types of chips. So we need to go here to board, and when we installed the Teensy Duino files, that actually added support for the Teensy microcontroller series. So if we click here on board, um, you can see that we have all these different types of Arduinos that are supported. So like the typical ones are the Arduino Nano, the Arduino Mega, um, and so on. There's a ton of Arduino products, uh, products nowadays. But the Teensy boards have been added, 
and I can select any of those uh, by going through this menu. So we're using a Teensy 3.2, which has the same architecture as the 3.1. So I'll select this board, and then my compiler is now in a mode to compile for uh, the Teensy 3.1 or 3.2 board. So I've already compiled the code. If I click on upload without compiling, it'll go ahead and compile anyways, so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, so I can go ahead and click upload. And over here, uh, I have my Teensy board connected to um, my Raspberry Pi through USB. So once everything is connected, um, then the Linux operating system should see the board OK. And then when I click on upload, it's going to recompile my sketch, and then it's going to attempt to load it onto the Teensy microcontroller. And when this happens, you'll see a little box pop up. And this is the uh, Teensy programmer. So basically, it's just saying that you need to press the Teensy button, uh, or the button on the Teensy to put it in programming mode. I'll hit this once. And once I press the button, that will actually go ahead and uh, upload the code. So I can go ahead and uh, repeat this process over and over again. I can program it as many times as I want to. And every time I hit the button, it'll basically bring up that uh, message showing you that the code has been programmed. And you can't see it on the screen, but now the LED is flashing. So I know now that um, my source code is now running on the Teensy. And uh, basically, the Teensy is ready for development, and it's functioning properly.